Today we'll look at the Fill Tool in Affinity. This tool is great for making gradients and also filling shapes with seamless patterns. I'm here in Affinity. Let me first create a shape to use our Fill Tool on. I'll double click on the shapes over here. Let's choose a double star and I'll click and drag to draw it. And let's make it yellow. The Fill Tool is this option over here. The square with a line through it. If you don't see it, you can right click on your toolbar, click Customize Tools, and you can search through Fill, and then click and drag it over here. So I'll close this. So with my object selected, I'll click on that Fill Tool, and then I'll click and drag on the object. And you can see it created a gradient. Now by default, the gradient is going to use the current fill color with a slightly darker version also. But of course, we can customize this as we like. Once you have your gradient control here, click on the dots at either end, and then over here on the color panel, you can go and change what it looks like. So let's make this one red. I'll go back, I'll click on this other dot. Let's make it a highly saturated yellow. And there we have our gradient. Now, if I click off my shape, it'll be unselected. If I wanna go and edit that gradient again later, I'll make sure I select my shape, then go and select the fill tool again, and the control will come back. Now, there are many ways to continue modifying this gradient. When you hover over one of the dots here, I recommend looking at the bottom of the screen on your operating system. It will give you the specific shortcuts for different operations. For example, I can click and drag to reorient the size of the gradient. On Mac, I can use the command key to move the gradient entirely itself. So if you're on Windows, look down here to see what those options are. You may notice this line in the middle here. This controls the fall off of the gradient, so I can drag it more towards the red or bring it more towards the yellow to have it distributed that way. I'll put it back in the middle. Something you probably want to do is add more colors to your gradient. And we can do that by clicking on the line here. So I'll click on this middle point here. And by default, it's going to fill in the color that's already there. So that was kind of like an orange-ish. But I'll click on it. And then over here, I can change it. I can click again down here to add another point. And I can change that too as I like. And if you want to delete a point, just click on it and press delete. And you can even move it later on. So I'll click on this middle point here. Let's get it more towards the middle. And I'll also mention that you can make a gradient point transparent. So with this point selected, instead of choosing the color here, I'll change the opacity. Let's dial this down. So now I have a transparent part of my gradient, so that's possible. Let me move it back up. Gradients also work exactly the same way with text. So I'll select my artistic text tool here, that's the T, and I'll click and drag, and let's type a word. Text, let's make it something thicker. I'll say Arial Black. And now with my text selected, once again, I'll click the Fill tool and I'll click and drag on the text. And we probably want something more interesting than these colors. Let me click the dot over here. Let's make it some type of blue. I'll click this other one. Maybe I'll make it like a purple. And there we have our text gradient. And the controls work exactly the same as with a shape. I can move around the point here. I can shorten it, lengthen it. It's all the same. And I can also make a custom curve. So I'll use the pen tool for that. Let's select the pen tool. Let's click and make some random shape here. I'll fill it with some color. And with it selected, once again, I'll select the fill tool. I'll click and drag, and then I can modify the gradient. And it works just like that. Now, by the way, one thing you can do is select multiple shapes and apply a gradient to all of them at once. So I'll select everything here in my document. I'll go and I'll click the gradient tool, and I'll click and drag across all of them. And you can see it affects all the shapes. And once again, the gradient tool still works exactly the same way. I've been using the gradient tool on the fill of an object, but we can also use it on the stroke. So I have this rectangle here. Let me add a stroke to it. I'll select it. Over here on the stroke panel, I'll select this here. Let me add a solid stroke. I'll make it really thick just so you can see it. And let's give it some color. Let's say orange to start. Now I'll select my fill tool. And if I click and drag on my object, notice how it affects the fill. Let me undo that. The way I can change this is with my fill tool selected, up here we have different options. And the context is what I want to change right now. By default, it's fill, but I'll click down and I'll select stroke. Now when I click and drag, it affects the stroke. And again, it works exactly the same. I'll select this point. Let's change the color. And there we have a gradient on the stroke. By default, gradients are linear, but we have other options too. Let's apply the gradient to this rectangle. And once again, we'll look at this top menu here. I've been using the default type linear. Or if I click this drop down, I can also choose elliptical. So I can move this in here. Let me change the diameter. Let's change the color so you can see it a little bit better. So with elliptical, I can make ovals. 
Now by default, the proportions are locked, but if I click this icon up here, I can unlock it to not maintain the aspect ratio. And I can make the oval as thin as I want. So it's a true ellipse. And I can actually add more colors as well. I'll just click on the control and I'll add another color. I can also choose radio. That would just be a perfect circle. So it only has this one axis. And I can also do conical. This one's kind of interesting. Kind of like pie slices here. A lot of times when you add a new color, it'll be desaturated at first. So you can see right here, it's kind of desaturated. I like to select the dot and then push it more towards the corner of this triangle to brighten it up a little bit. So that's kind of a common issue when interpolating colors. There's also a mesh gradient. Now I have a whole video on mesh gradients. I'll leave a link in the description below, but this one's really good for nice abstract shapes. So I'll select all of this. Let's make it red. Actually, let me delete this. I'll simplify it a little bit. Let's start from scratch on this one. Make it solid. Then let's make it a mesh. And this is our basic mesh gradient. So we can choose to add different colors in here. And it's really cool for abstract designs. I can click and drag these points. We also have the bitmap option. I'll talk more about that in a second. Then we have the hatch option. This is another new one. If I click and drag, we can actually make hatch patterns. You have to experiment with this one a little bit. You can see if I adjust the width over here, I have the lines. I can change the scale of it. This is pretty high by default. I'll make it smaller, maybe 100. So I can make these kind of grid patterns. So it's kind of cool for that. Let's go back to linear gradients for a moment. I'll also point out that when you're using the gradient tool, you also have some options up here for how you want to edit the colors. So this is another way, if I click on this swatch, we have a precise way of editing the gradient. So I can add a stop here, I'll click on it. And if I want to make it exactly somewhere, let's say exactly 50%, I can type in 50 there and position it exactly where I want. And if I want to change the colors here, I click on this color swatch and I change it. So it's just another visualization. I also have the options of reversing the gradient here so I can swap it. And we also have these other options on the toolbar here. This button rotates the gradient around. This one also reverses it. This one maintains the aspect ratio for some of the controls. And this one here will anchor our gradient to the document. So right now, if I move my square around, the gradient moves with it. But if I anchor it to the document and then I move my square around, the gradient stays in place. So which one you use depends on your situation. Typically I unanchor it, so I'll uncheck this. Now we can also use the fill tool to fill our shape with an image. So I'll select my shape here. I'll choose the fill tool and under type, this was the bitmap option. So let me select that. I'll choose this file on my computer. I'll click open and it fills it in. I'll click and drag and you can see I can adjust the orientation of it and the size. And up here there's additional options, wrapping, mirroring, repeating. I'll just say wrap for now. So that's how we can fill our shape with an image. Now where this feature really shines is with seamless patterns. I'm on the website Creative Fabrica here, and I found this cool seamless pattern of a cat. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But I like this website because I can download tons of assets from it quite cheaply with a one-time subscription plan. So I've downloaded it to my computer. Let's load this graphic into Affinity. So I'll select my rectangle in Affinity. I'll select the fill tool again. And once again, I'll choose bitmap again. Now I'll choose the cat image. I'll press open. Now if I click and drag, I can fill it with this seamless pattern. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And you can see that it's actually repeating. Now one thing that's really important when using a seamless pattern is to carefully examine it to make sure it's actually working. Sometimes when you download these patterns, they have actually problems in them and they don't line up perfectly on the edges. Let me place the original image in my document so we can compare. Here's our original cat image. I can see that this pink planet is the top of the pattern there. So I'm gonna follow along that edge there. So let's look at our image. Here's the pink planet. I'm looking across the top of it. I'm just kind of scanning sideways, looking for any problems. And it seems like it fits pretty well there. What else is happening in this image? Let's look at the sides of the image. We have the blue planet and it says, I need more space over here. Let's find that. Here's the blue planet. I need more space. So I'm looking up and down in this area and it seems to be pretty good. So 
So you always want to verify these images when you download them. If there are any affinity tutorials you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.